Let's talk about behavioristic theory. But I would like to ask a question first. Do you think that language can be learned the way we learn a certain behavior? For example, the behavior of learning to clap. Let's assume that you are teaching your younger brother or sister on how to clap. In baam ko clap clap baby, something like that. Let's assume na tinulad na kamet. So you are teaching the baby how to clap at the same time, the baby is now learning the language which is the word clap through the process of imitation. So in this phenomenon, we can come up with a question of, is it really acceptable that a child is learning a language the way he or she learns a certain behavior? Behavioristic theory argues that a process of language acquisition for an infant is similar to the process of learning behaviors. They believe that language acquisition and developments are learned behaviors and not a process that involves an active thought. So the only thing that this theory focuses is on the behavior, not on social interaction or on the mind of a child. John B. Watson he was an American psychologist who popularized the scientific theory of behaviorism. He was the father and founder of behaviorism. He was considered as a major proponent and a strict behaviorist who shifted the focus of psychology from mind to behavior. And this approach of observing and controlling behavior came to known as behaviorism. He contributed a lot in the development of behavioristic theory. Let's move on to the basic tenets of behavioristic theory. Behaviorist theory dwells only on spoken language. You have to take note that this theory is only applicable on verbal behavior and not on written language, and its primary medium is oral speech. Second, stimulus response in this theory is a pure case of conditioning. When you say conditioning, a particular behavior is learned and the learning could be a process of imitation of language from the environment of the learner. Third, all learnings are establishments of reinforcement and rewards. Rewards could be a praise, hugs, kisses, or material reward, and anything that gives a positive response to a child. Fourth, behavior's theory is a habit formation. Behavior's theory is the habit formation theory of language in teaching or in learning, which then reminds us the learning of structural grammar. For it to become a habit, it gone through the process of imitation, reinforcement, practice, and repetition. Remember, repetition is the result of habit formation. Let's watch this video clip to see how these principles can be applied to the learning of a child to a language. <laughs> so mama started saying, I give hands on. Mama. In the first video, we can see that the mother display a desired behavior by telling her child to repeat after her in saying mama. That's the stimulus or what we call behavior. Mama. In the second video, after which the baby then tried to mimic the sounds by saying mama. That's the process of imitation. Mama, yay! The trifecta. Yes. In the third video, the parent claps and praises the baby in doing the good behavior. That is uttering the correct language which is mama. This is what we call reward. Oh, wait! Where's mama? Mama! Bye! Do this several times. On the fourth video, for the second time, Mama. the mother is again teaching the baby to repeat after her. That's a method of practice. Mama! And on the last video, after a long practice, we can see that the baby repeated the word. That's the process of repetition. Because the baby feels appreciated for doing the good behavior, that triggered her to repeat the behavior again which is likely to become a habit. Imagine this happening over and over for every word, part of a speech, phrase, until it becomes a sentence of a language. This is how behavioristic theory tries to explain to us. Let's move on to the famous experts of behavioristic theory who conducted experiments in line with behaviorism. They will tell us more something about this theory. We begin with an American psychologist named Edward Thorndike. He was the first behaviorist to explore the area that learning is establishment of associations on particular behavior and consequences of that behavior. He is famous for connectionism theory, which states that learning is a product of stimulus and response. 
He devised a trial and error experiment to explain the law of learning. In here, he stated that whatever child learns today must be connected to what they have learned previously. In other words, a learner must be able to distinguish what they are learning today based on what they already know in the previous learning. So, trial and error explains that a learner must interact with the environment using trial and error until a successful result is obtained. In short, learning is a process of practice. For example, napan ko manikay ayam nga ding mo, and then he heard an unfamiliar word. Kung ako magjukay ayam na kut, lodi, something like that. And then when he came home, he tried to imitate the word, but he was not able to utter the word correctly. In baga na ako magamama na, mama, doli ka, something like that. Mabalin nga na pagbalik tayo na ako magju word, which shows then the limited capacity of the child's speech. Because of the error, mabalin nga kinatawa ni mama na. Anat ako na mat, kung na ako ma. Yung mat response na. So then he might realize nga wrong yun bagana. The next day, bagana ulit di yung word nga dolly tikay ayam na. But it happens nga kinatawa anda ulit. So as you can see the consequences of his behavior is that he was laughed because of his incorrect language. The next day, he tried to error the word again, again and again until such time na ala na matla yung correct no word. So in this sense, the connectionism chore is in action. Sarnak proposed that in order to understand a language, the child must try to interact with it using the trial and error until successful action is obtained. Next is B.F. Skinner who is an American psychologist, behaviorist, author, inventor, social philosopher, psychology professor who is best known for his theory of operant conditioning chamber in the behavioristic theory. Operant conditioning is the use of consequences to modify the occurrence and form of behavior. It refers to the conditioning in which a child produces a response, which is the utterance, and this operand is maintained by reinforcement. Remember, consequences can be a reward or punishment. He developed his Skinner's box tool to explain his operand conditioning theory. So what is operand conditioning? It is a learned behavior that will help the children to acquire a language. Remember, in operand conditioning, there should be a reward to increase the desired behavior of a child. Operand conditioning has two forms. Reinforcement and Punishment Reinforcement is a reward given or taken to a learner to increase a desired behavior, while punishment is given to reduce an undesired behavior. Reinforcement can be divided into two, positive and negative. Positive reinforcement is the addition of stimulus, like praises, frequent exposure, material reward, etc. For example, your younger brother got a hugs and kisses from your mother after repeating after you and saying the word mama for the first time. The hugs and kisses are the positive reinforcement and reward that would trigger the baby to repeat his behavior again in the future. Whereas, negative reinforcement is the removal of an unpleasant stimulus. Take note, unpleasant thing. We might connote here that the negative reinforcement is something that would cause harm, but it's not. For example, it can be taking away a restriction to a baby from playing outside or allowing him to eat as much food as he wants because he did a good job in learning a language. You have to remember that in reinforcement, the goal is to increase the likelihood of a voluntary response for desirable behavior, for example, when the baby uttered the correct language. Negative punishment can also be divided into two. We have the positive punishment and negative punishment. Positive punishment is the adding of unaversive stimuli. For example, the baby is hungry and he asked for a food, so he said, um. With that, let's say that the mother told the baby that he will give him a food if he says the word pop pop instead of um. The positive punishment would be the food if he utters the correct word for pop pop. If the child realizes that he gets what he needs in saying pop pop, then he will no longer say um, rather he would say pop pop. The positive punishment is what encouraged the baby to say the correct word in which the undesired behavior of saying um was removed. Negative punishment is the act of totally removing the pleasant stimuli in order to decrease the undesired behavior. For example, you took away your baby's toy from him or her because he uttered the word ma instead of saying mama. By removing something from him, the child is, is not likely to utter the word ma again in the future since he realized that he will be punished by taking away his toy. Instead, he will follow his mother by saying mama for a desirable action. You also have to remember that in punishment, the goal is to decrease the likelihood of a response for an undesirable behavior. For instance, when the baby did not utter the correct language. But, the general idea of this model is that when you want a desirable behavior to be repeated again in the future, you need to reinforce a reward to a learner. Whereas, 
if you don't want to repeat an undesirable behavior in the future, you can provide a punishment in order to prevent that behavior from happening again in the future. To conclude, a child acquire mother tongue habits by the use of wired bubblings which are similar to the words uttered by a person around them. Because the babies are rewarded for bubblings and mutterings, more production of similar type into combination of syllables and words in the same circumstances will be reinforced. Thus, babies continue producing sounds, cluster of sounds, and by the passage of time, they merge the utterances by analogy and generalizations. Then bubblings and imitations develop into socialist speech, but gradually they are internalized as implicit speech, and thus many of their sentences get close to adults. So, in the process of trial and error, in which satisfactory utterances are reinforced by understanding and agreement, and then inaccurate utterances are rejected by the lack of reward, children progressively discover to make better discriminations until their production approximates the speech of the adults. Therefore, it is very clear that language learning and its development for the behaviorist is a matter of conditioning by means of imitation, reinforcement, practice, and habituation which constitute the basis of language acquisition. Hello. Hello. Say hello. Hello. <laughs> I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you.